Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG with Ham Radio Basics. I did mention in the last episode ferrite beads and common mode chokes, and there's a lot to discuss when it comes to ferrite beads. I found a website that has a great deal of really good information, and let's look at that in ferrite beads right after this. Last episode, I mentioned ferrite beads, uh, RF chokes, common mode chokes. Ferrite beads are a wonderful device that can do all kinds of things. Um, they're, they really are pretty amazing. Um, this is one that's uh, shaped like a donut uh, or toroidal shaped. It's very effective. Uh, you can stack up uh, three or four of these and, and really increase the uh, uh, the uh, lump impedance on a line of coax. There are some that uh, that snap on, like this one. Um, this one's designed for RG8X. Uh, there are larger diameter ones like this uh, that go around uh, LMR400. Uh, they open up and uh, snap closed. For example, you can stick um, bunches of, of the snap-on beads on coax if you already have the connectors on, snap them in place, um, either tape them or use um, a heat shrink. Another way that I've done fairly frequently is to get uh, ferrite beads that are cylindrical uh, in their shape. And uh, that's this one's for RG8X. Uh, put them in a stack, uh, put heat shrink, heat shrink around them. Uh, when I put my antenna together, I have them on the, uh, the coax, if I can get this right, like that. And uh, they work great. Now, there's a better way to do this. You can, and this is what I've done for, for decades, uh, a better way with even a greater efficiency in terms of its impedance is to take the toroidal kind, uh, stack three or four of them together. Uh, there's a point of diminishing returns that as you add, uh, you don't get the same amount with each one. It decreases. But you can pass. I've got seven passes of LMR400 uh, through these. And I believe these are a two-inch uh, ID. Um, they have a really good, now that's not the neatest job in the world, and I, it, but uh, it'll work. It can present uh, a couple thousand ohms impedance on the coax and really stop common low currents. Not all companies that sell ferrite beads are created equal, and you really have to be careful. You, there are some that are sold on some major websites where they don't give you the frequency range or it's a bit iffy or a bit sketchy as to whether or not they're going to work at 14 megahertz. They may be ferry beads that work great at 500 megahertz, but they aren't worth a darn at 14. So what should you do? My advice is buy it from a company that has uh, some ham radio guys running it. And um, one of those that I know for sure is good is Palomar. Um, the the uh, guy that I corresponded with was licensed in the early 60s as I was. He's very knowledgeable, and the website is really good. So let's look at that website and see what we can glean from their types of ferrite beads, the shapes, sizes, and to some extent, uh, the prices. There are inexpensive ferrite beads out there that are much less expensive than what's on Palomar. But if they don't work, it's just a waste of money. And I'm going to turn around and start the other camera so I can record, uh, record off the screen. All right, this is the Palomar Engineers website, and the URL is www.palomar-engineers.com. Palomar is P-A-L-O-M-A-R-engineers.com. Um, I'm not being compensated or given anything for doing this, this video. Um, I found their website to be extraordinarily helpful. There's just all kinds of information here. So... Uh, just wanted to quickly show you what's just briefly what's on here. A good thing 
is that they've been in business 53 years. It's owned by amateur radio operators, and uh, they've got Ham Radio Outlet as, uh, as one of their dealers. If you're looking for a particular kind of product, on the left-hand side, they've got pretty much everything listed, balanced with all kinds of ratios, um, common mode chokes, different kinds, fairy beads, snap-on uh, combination packs, RFI kits for uh, HF amplifiers. Now that's that's a new one for me. Um, things for loop antennas, off-center fed antennas, vertical antennas, Sturba curtain, you name it. Uh, they've designed products to go with that particular um, item. Let's take just a real quick lo look at tech support and application notes and ferry tutorials. Um, and let's do mix selection because that for me has always been the most confusing thing. Just real quick, uh, there are two material types. There is the nickel zinc and manganese zinc core material. Manganese zinc is type 31, which is what I've used in the past. Um, there's these three paragraphs, if you can remember the stuff that's in these three paragraphs, it will be very helpful. Um, reason being is that in some cases you do need to use the manganese zinc in other cases um, the nickel zinc and they explain that so and if you're not sure just buying one of the products of course they've already made the correct selection um, let's go to uh, common mode oh here we go coax feed line common mode choke one to one that's what I'm looking for well here's pretty much the same thing that I made um, and they've got that on RG213. Yeah, actually, this is a picture of RG213. They've got it for different sizes of coax. It uh, looks like that would work with RG58, uh, maybe RG8X, uh, RG213, RG8, LMR400, and larger. And here are some made up, um, ready to go with the coax connectors already on. Looks like they're sil silver plated. Here's what I showed earlier. Um, their device is called a super choker. And it's um, 7 to 30 megahertz. Uh, its choking impedance is roughly 1 to 4.5 K ohms. Power handling 5 kW. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure those coax connectors are designed for 5KW, but uh, there certainly is a lot of headroom, so in, in our typical amateur application, it it, uh, it would be fine. And so there's just all kinds of uh, devices on this website. One last point. Um, they do have a phone number I haven't called since there are a number of products here uh, let's do this one the uh i'm curious about that that kit um if you were to let's say you're building an off-center fed dipole and you looked at the website and were confused best thing to do is either drop an email i found them to be really responsive to my email or um or call them on the phone and say hey i'm i'm putting up a vertical what would you recommend um they're going to be able to recommend products and tell you why that's a good idea in, in the past, I've mentioned that anything in the radio room can be an antenna. And I, I, I wasn't familiar with this product, so this is new to me as I'm looking at the picture. But obviously what they're doing is they're stopping RF from flowing down the AC cable. These are the, this is the output of the amplifier. It's like a, um, RG213. The input side is maybe RG58. And this I know what that that's the um, the cable that switches puts the uh, the linear amplifier and transmit. I've had seven of the seven of these amplifiers, so I'm very familiar with uh, with how it works. So here's a kit that gives you the ferry beads you would need to filter uh, radio frequency interference. 
Best way to stop RF is not to have it in the shack to start with, but each of these lines can be an antenna, could be a speaker, could be these control cables, could be um, the AC cord to, now that's interesting. AC cord is uh, going up into this box. Normally it's in the power supply, but whatever. Um, so if you were hooking up an L4B, uh, L7, L5, uh, or rather L4 or L7, uh, and you called them and said, this is what I've got, what do you recommend? They probably would recommend this kit. And it can save you a lot of grief. Anyway, it's an amazing site. All kinds of stuff on here. Uh, let's see, here's another one for transceivers. I wonder what that is. All right. Uh, so they've got kits for various transceivers. Let's um, uh, let's just see what that is. Okay, there's the uh, the back end of a uh, a Yacy transceiver, and again. As we've discussed, and if I get a bigger picture, um, each of these cables going into this transceiver can act like an antenna and literally receive RF, take RF, and put it into the transceiver in a place where you don't want it. It, you can't just buy a ferrite bead and think that it's going to work. There are various mixes, and they work at different frequencies and you want to make sure you get the right one. In any case, um, if you have a question, post it below. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Thanks for watching. This is Jim, W6LG. See you the next time. Thanks.